This lesson explains why there's so much hate, killing, senseless violence, and war in the world. Then we answer the question, will there ever be peace on earth? First, we go to the King James Bible to clear up some confusion about the end of the world. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 21. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and the end of the world? Now, if you read those verses, you would think life on earth will cease to exist, and the earth will be a lifeless planet floating through space. Not true. God did not create the earth to be a lifeless planet floating through space. God created the earth to always be inhabited, but by people who were obedient to his will. Let's compare those same verses to the New American Standards Bible. And remember, the New American Standards Bible is an updated version of the King's James Bible. The New American Standards Bible was not translated from the Holy Scriptures. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20 in the New American Standard Bible, teaching them to observe all that I command you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Matthew chapter 24, verse 3, in the New American Standard Bible, as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things happen, and what will be the signs of your coming, and the end of the age? Notice the New American Standard Bible uses the word age instead of world. If your Bible is a more recent translation of the Holy Scripture, you may see the phrase, this system of things, instead of world. You should realize that life on earth will not cease to exist. The earth will not be a lifeless planet floating through space. So the question becomes, what does this system of things and this age refer to. This age and this system of things refers to all man-made governments and false religion. False religions must come to an end because they are not teaching the truth about God's Word, the Bible. Man-made governments must come to an end because man was not put on this earth to govern himself. Man was put on his spirit to be obedient to God's will, to live like God wants him to live. Both man-made governments and false religion are influenced by the devil. Now let's think for a minute. If all you have on planet Earth are man-made governments, and all man-made governments are influenced by the devil, then the whole world lies and the power of the devil. Let's verify that statement. Let's turn to 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. We know that we are of God, and that the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. Now for those people who say God established the nation of Israel, that's true. But the nation of Israel you read about in the Bible was brought to an end in 135 AD in the Bar Kokhba War. Modern day Israel was established in 1948. It is a parliamentary democracy. Just another man made government. Now the question becomes how did the world end up in the power of the wicked one? And when did he gain influence over these man made governments? Well, the answer is the devil always had influence over them. And it began 
way back in the book of Genesis. I'll explain. After the creation of Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 28 to 30, God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Then God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the surface of the earth, and every tree which has fruit yielding seed, it shall be food for you. And to every beast of the earth, and every bird of the sky, and to everything that moves on the earth which has life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. But from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat from it, you will surely die. Both Adam and Eve knew what God's commandments were. They both knew what God's will was. But in steps the serpent. Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 through 6. Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Indeed, as God said, You shall not eat from any tree of the garden. The woman said to the serpent, From the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat. But from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat from it, or touch it, or you will die. The serpent said to the woman, You surely will not die. For God knows that in a day you eat from it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate. And she gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. In those verses, the devil uses the serpent as a puppet. Notice, the devil did not force Eve to do anything. He lied to her. He deceived her. Satan the devil, the great liar, the great deceiver. So Eve's decision to eat the forbidden fruit was influenced by the devil. Now God could have destroyed both Adam and Eve right there on the spot. But he'd already told them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. God cannot lie. He will not lie. His words will come to be. So Adam and Eve are allowed to live so they can fulfill God's word. But they would eventually die because death was a punishment for eating the forbidden fruit. Understand, Adam and Eve were created with perfect health and everlasting life. Now God's plan for the earth was the earth would be a paradise. The people living on the earth would have perfect health and everlasting life and they would be obedient to God's will. So Adam and Eve were created with perfect health and everlasting life. And they had everlasting life right up until they ate the forbidden fruit and God sent us to death. One important thing to remember is this. The devil did not force Eve to do anything. He lied to her. He deceived her. Eve's decision to eat the forbidden fruit was influenced by the devil. There are two schools of thought on this. One school of thought says the devil called into question God's authority. Authority being the right to say something the power to enforce it. The other school of thought is the devil called into question the way God ruled Adam and Eve, the way he governed Adam and Eve. Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. For God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Well, they would not be like God. They would have the knowledge of good and evil. Having the knowledge of good and evil, you would think that they could tell themselves what to do, rule themselves. 
govern themselves. Well, it did not work out well for Adam and Eve, nor has it worked out well for mankind. Regardless of which school of thought you're in, a man-made government is just another example of man trying to do something that God did not intend man to do, govern himself. Man was put on this earth to be obedient to God's will, to live like God wanted him to live. Therefore, all man-made governments are influenced by the devil. Now this explains why there's so much hate, racism, prejudice, bigotry, lust, love of money, love of material things, so much killing, senseless violence, and why there are wars. Let's face it, war is just one man-made government selling a dispute with another man-made government by means of war. All man-made governments are influenced by the devil, for the whole world lies under the power of the wicked one. But it does not answer the question, will there ever be peace on earth? Before we continue, we need to explain the differences between phrases that are used interchangeably, but they have different meanings. They refer to different things. There's the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God is an invisible spirit world where the one true God lives, and all those spirit beings who are obedient to his will live. Flesh and blood cannot exist in heaven, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven is an earthly kingdom set up by God Almighty and the Messiah, Jesus Christ, sits on the throne. The kingdom of heaven and God's kingdom are one and the same. The kingdom of heaven will bring an end to all these man-made governments and God's kingdom will last forever. Now let's verify that statement. Let's turn to Daniel chapter 2. Verse 44. In the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed, and that kingdom will not be left for another people. It will crush and put an end to all these kingdoms, but it will itself endure forever. Daniel chapter 7, verse 27. Then the sovereignty, the dominion, and the greatness of all the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be given to the people of the saints. Of the highest one. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all the dominions will serve and obey him. In God's kingdom, people will be obedient to God's will. They will live like God wants them to. They will do God's will. And since God has no part in war, God's people will have no part in war. Then you will have peace on earth. This is why Jesus Christ said, When you pray, Pray in this way. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. Pray then in this way. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Notice, Jesus Christ said, pray for God's kingdom to come, for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. He did not say pray for peace. The reason he did not say pray for peace is, this system of things, which includes all man-made governments and false religion both are influenced by the devil you're not going to have peace living in a system which lies under the power of the wicked one now for those people that pray for peace go right ahead and pray but i think you would do better praying for what jesus christ told you to pray for for god's kingdom to come 
for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then you can try being obedient to God's will. Try living like God wants you to. Try doing God's will. Question. Will there ever be peace on earth? No. Not in this system of things, which includes all man-made governments and false religion. Both are influenced by the devil. Question. Will there ever be peace on earth? Yes. In God's kingdom, God's people will be obedient to his will. They will live like God wants them to live. They will do God's will. And since God has no part in war, God's people will have no part in war. Then you will have peace on earth. Now I encourage you to read and study the Bible from beginning to end and try to get a better understanding of God's word, the truth. The truth will not bind you. The truth will set you free. This is Bible studies. The truth is about to be told. If these videos give you a better understanding of God's word, the Bible, then by all means, give them a thumbs up.